In this video, we're going to be looking at growth rates of sequences. Um, so the idea of using growth rates is to be able to determine what the limit as n goes to infinity is of a ratio of two sequences a n over b n using that I might know that a n grows faster than b n or that I know that b n grows faster than a n. So you were first introduced to growth rates back in section 4.7 with L'Hopital's rule. So let's just remind ourselves um, what information we can get from this limit that will, will tell us about comparing two growth rates. So to compare two growth rates of um, two non-decreasing sequences of positive terms, we look at the limit as n goes to infinity of a n over b n. If that limit is zero, that tells us that b n is growing faster than a n. And if that limit is infinity, then that tells us that a n is growing faster than b n. Okay, and we use this notation of a n and curly braces and then this double less than sign than b n to mean that the b n sequence is growing faster than our sequence a n. Okay, so that gives us a little bit of notation and ideas of how limits and this growth rate notation um, work together. So let's look at our theorem here. So we have the following information. Um, this theorem here is telling us our order of growth rates um, ordered according to increasing growth rates as n goes to infinity. So if an appears before bn, if a sequence appears first in this list, that means it grows the slowest. Something over to the right here is growing the fastest. Okay, so let's look at an example where I can maybe make use of this theorem. So let's say I have the limit as n goes to infinity of log n over n squared. This theorem tells me that um, my power of a log function actually grows the slowest. It certainly grows slower than any power of n. So I know that this limit is going to need to be zero since log n grows slower than n squared. Okay. Now what if I wanted to just confirm this using what I know previously? If I wanted to just use L'Hopital's rule, I could also um, use that method to determine this limit. So let's look at this again here. So I've got a limit as n goes to infinity of log n over n squared. This will also give us an idea of um, why log n should be growing slower than n squared. I see that I can use L'Hopital's rule on this. So we'll go ahead and apply L'Hopital's rule because I do have an infinity over infinity form. So this would be a limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n over 2n, which would give me a limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over 2n squared, which does equal 0. Okay, so for this kind of problem you could use growth rates or you could use L'Hopital's rule to determine what that limit is. Okay. So let's just look at a little bit more of this theorem and kind of see why some of these growth rates um, are the way they are. So we looked at this end already. We sort of have this idea that log n should be growing slower than some power of n because we would be able to use L'Hopital's rule to show that that limit is zero. Let's look at this, this upper end because this has some, some pieces that maybe we haven't seen too much yet. Um, I just want to note that this b to the n piece, this means some sort of exponential function like 2 to the n, 5 to the n, e to the n. So an exponential function always grows faster than a power function. So some 2 to the n, 10 to the n, 5 to the n, that's going to grow faster than n to any, um, any power. So we want to keep that in mind. What about this factorial function here? Remember that um, the factorial function means that we take the first number and then we multiply it by one less than that number all the way down to one. So n factorial means n times n minus one times n minus two, et cetera, all the way down to three times two times one. So for example, five factorial means five times four times three times two times one. Okay. So when we talk about comparing b to the n and n factorial and trying to think of why does n factorial grow faster than some exponential function. Let's think about that for a, for a minute here. So we're trying to look at b to the n versus n factorial. So b to the n means that I have b times b times b 
n times, so I have n factors of some number b. Okay. Whereas for n factorial, I would have n factors of n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to times 2 times 1, but that's still n different factors. Okay. And then the idea for why n factorial is growing faster than b to the n is if I have um, some particular value for b, whether that's 2 or 100 or 1,000, that stays constant. I get to multiply 1,000, let's say, times itself more times here. Whereas for n factorial, um, I'm going to just be increasing n. So no, I'm not only going to be increasing the number of factors that I have, but I'm also going to be increasing the number that I'm actually getting to multiply all through that product. So that gives you an idea of why this n factorial should be um, bigger, growing faster than just some constant number raised to the n power. If we think about the n factorial versus n to the n and why n to the n should be bigger. So think about the fact that n factorial again is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1. And n to the n would mean you're multiplying n times itself n times. So I have n factors here of just n. Here I've got n factors, but of n times n minus 1, etc. Okay, so writing it like this, we can see that the factors of n to the n are bigger than the factors of n factorial, so n to the n must be growing faster. Okay, so we have this idea of n to the n must be growing faster than n factorial, and over here it must be that n factorial is growing faster than our b to the n. Okay, so let's look at a couple more examples where we can apply these growth rates. Um, you probably want to keep in mind what's going on on this, this right hand side that, that the exponential here is growing slower than the factorial which is slower than n to the n. Some of the, uh, the left hand side here of this, um, this theorem you might not need to memorize quite as much or you might already be more familiar with. We know that we can also use L'Hopital's rule to sort of help us down here if we were comparing some of those different terms. So let's look at some examples. So here I have a sequence that's n to the 10th over the 1,000th power of log n. So if I wanted to determine how those things compare or if I wanted to use growth rates to determine whether that sequence converges or what it converges to, I need to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of n to the 10th over log 1,000 um, n or log n to the 1,000th power. So notice that I have a power of n here over some power of log. I know that a power of n always grows faster than a power of log. So without having to do L'Hopital's rule lots and lots of times, I know that this is going to have to be infinity. Right? And that since our power of n is growing faster than this power of log. Okay. So we'd say that this sequence must diverge. Okay, we'll look at just one more example. So here I have the following sequence where the nth term is given by 6 to the n plus 3 to the n over 6 to the n plus n to the 1,000th power. So I want to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of this. So we know that we have a technique um, when we're finding limits as n goes to infinity, if I had just powers of n divided by powers of n of dividing the denominator by the highest power um, of n that appears. Now here I have an exponential thing in the denominator and a power of n. So the idea is I want to divide my numerator and denominator by whatever is growing the fastest in my, in my denominator. So when we just had powers of n, the thing that was growing the fastest was the highest power of n. But here, what's growing faster is 6 to the n. That's growing faster than n to the 1,000. So to simplify this, we're going to divide the numerator and denominator by that 6 to the n. So I'm going to have 1 plus 3 over 6 to the n here, all over 1 plus 
n to the 1,000 over 6 to the n. So this is where we're going to need to use some of our growth rate information. So here I have a power of n over 6 to the n. I know the exponential thing, 6 to the n, grows much faster than a power of n. So this must be going to 0. Okay, since 6 to the n grows faster than n to the 1,000. Okay. Here I have 1 half to the n. We know that that's a geometric sequence. If I'm taking a half of the previous thing each time, I know that's going to 0. So this sequence would be converging to 1. So we can say here that a n converges to 1. Okay, so now we can use this um, growth rate information as a tool in helping us determine sequence convergence.